we got a new tool. So today we're gonna to use this to fix this. And perfect. Hi guys, welcome back to the build room. In this week's episode, we are taking on some rust on violet crumbles, and we're gonna use a new planishing hammer to see what we can do in terms of metal shaping. So stick around and check it out. Okay, so for those of you joining us for the first time, we are working on our 1976 Toyota Celica Coupe. We've nicknamed that Violet Crumbles, and it has a lot of rust. Now, we have fixed a lot of that rust over the last 30 or so episodes, uh, and we are on the home stretch. But today, we're gonna tackle one more common area of rust, and that is the rear roof section, which is an area that has two panels that overlap. It's a moisture trap, and they always rust out. There's not a lot you can do to prevent it, so let's go have a look now and see exactly how bad the situation is. There's a couple of tricky bits with this. The first thing is that there's actually two layers of sheet metal here that have rusted through. So we're gonna to have to repair multiple layers. The second one is this is a compound curve. It has a crown running in this direction and also curves through here. So it's not as simple as just bending a single piece of metal and then welding it in. Now this is in a pretty bad state, not the worst I've seen, but uh, obviously not made any better. You can see how easily the purple paint is pulled off just with a bit of 100 mile an hour tape being on there for a couple of months and then pulled off. And this is that tape. You can see the amount of metal and paint that's been pulled off into it. So in order to shape the compound curve here that we're gonna need, I'm gonna use our new tool, the planishing hammer. And this is the beast in question. It is a Metal Master, I think it's a PPH51 planishing hammer. It was about 350 bucks from Hare and Forbes. Again, I'm not affiliated with them in any way, but they are pretty exciting. I mean, even this little guy's super interested in what's going on here. Uh, it basically looks like a pretty serious piece of equipment, but just really far away. Uh, yeah, it's about half height, I guess, from what I would have expected. The basics of it are, you have a pneumatic air hammer and a anvil, and it strikes at around somewhere between 900 and 1400 blows per minute, depending on your air pressure. And there's a big steel frame holding everything together with enough of a throat capacity here to take on larger pieces of work. So yeah, high blows per minute, and a big throat capacity is a recipe for success, apparently. This one's also foot pedal operated, so you can keep both hands on your piece while you're working it. Okay, so before we start grinding on this and making a massive amount of mess, there's a couple of things I wanna protect. Firstly, this stainless steel trim and this sail panel here. Neither of them in great condition, but that doesn't mean that we just trash them and throw them in the bin. And the best way to protect these is just gonna to be to take them off. It'll also give me easier access to behind the drip rail, so it's a win-win. Now, I've already come inside here and removed the sail panel, which is now off, and if we look really tight in there, we'll be able to see the sky and see the rust in the second layer. And I've fitted the requisite vice grips to the uh, window winder, so I can wind this down. And from there, this seal is gonna have to come out, and then behind there, there's a bunch of screws that are holding this trim in. And the sail panel has a number of bolts that are accessible through these holes. So let's get all that out and then see where we're at. All right, so now you can see what this looks like. We have a small metal edge there, and we're sitting on the flat rail. And this stainless steel actually is folded at the top, obviously, so you don't have a sharp edge. And then it comes down around the bottom of this channel, and then up the other side. So there's two ways people go about this. You put your fingers in there and you pull down, and you run you know, quite a high risk of denting this and damaging it. I mean, this one's not perfect, but it is salvageable. Or 
You put a screwdriver in from the back and you pop it off the back lip, which is my preferred option. I think it's a safer one. You just put a large screwdriver behind it and you're just looking to pop the back lip off, which will then let you pull it up. I'll see if I can show you that from inside of the car. All right, so there it is. Screwdriver on the back of the lip. There we go. Okay, so once you've broken that first part of the seal along here, you can see that I'm just gonna be able to pull it off relatively easily just with my fingers, boom, and we're off. I mean, that should not be a particularly difficult process to get this off. Uh, if it is, you're doing it wrong. And then if we look inside, you can see that there's a little lip here, which is wrapping around the entire piece. So yeah, we're just opening that up. So this all just twists off really nice and easy. All right, so you can see with all of that out of the way, we've got a lot more access. And we've got a couple of problems here, which is the rust is going all the way down into the rail, which isn't great. Uh, and it's also starting to bubble up under here, although I think we might have got to that just in time. So now we're gonna bust out the power tools and see what lies beneath. Okay, so this is what we're left with. No real surprises in this area. The rust has obviously extended a little bit further down here, so I need to make sure that my rust repairs come down to about there. Some rust down the inside of the drip rail here, but it hasn't penetrated that metal. So I think we'll be fine just to treat that and uh, move on. Now, if you're looking closely in here, you can see we've got a top layer of metal here, and then we've got an inner skin. In addition to that, we've also got a couple of little pinholes here the moving through to that lower skin. Now these probably would have led to a pretty bad rust issue here in this corner as well. Uh, but I'm just gonna zip them up with the MIG and then grind them flat. I can probably rust proof them from the inside slightly, so we should be good. Interestingly, if you have a look along here, see that lighter area? That's not primer, I think that's actually metal mend or something like that. Now these Celicas have a seam on the roof line between here and the sail panel. And normally that's filled with this brass brazing. Uh, but when people repair here, you quite often have to scrub that out. And um, there's a bunch of different ways that people try to replace it. Doing this brass is obviously the hardest way to do it, to be honest. Um, so most people just go for a two part epoxy and they fill that seam. Now, what I might do as part of this repair, because obviously a lot of water will have got down the back here, I may grind this all out just to make sure that it's still reasonable quality underneath. Uh, but we'll cross that bridge once this is done, because at the moment, this is still providing a little bit of adhesion and structure. So uh, this will be one of the last things I do. So now to form this up, I just need a piece of metal that's of the right width and the right length. And then we're gonna try it out in the planishing hammer. Now, a planishing hammer is normally used to smooth metal, not to shape it. So we're gonna be a little bit out of our comfort zone here, but we might as well give it a crack. So normally what you do is you'd have a big sand-filled beater bag, you'd put your metal on top of it, you'd beat it into the shape that you want, and when you've got it roughed in, then you'd bring it back over here and you would planish it to get the final form that you want, or smooth that form out to get something that's a uh, reasonably good finished product. But you don't have to put your metal on a beater bag first. Obviously the impact from this hammer banging down on this anvil is going to slightly stretch any metal that's pinched between it. So on our piece of metal, what I've done is just marked out a wide strip which represents the line down the drip rail that I wanna try and keep in this. And I'm going to try and shape it two ways. I need to get the crown this way and it actually tapers off more at the rear than it does at the front. Uh, and then also I need that large curve as it comes off the roof and down the drip rail. And as I said, I'm a complete newbie, so I'm not gonna stand here and tell you how this is gonna go, because honestly, I don't know. Instead, what I'm gonna do is just get it in here, have a play with it, get a feel for things, and then we'll come back and see where we are.
And perfect. Well, not quite perfect. So the planishing hammer was a mixed bag. Uh, it did allow me to have a little bit of control and shape this without uh, going too crazy. I think considering the shape of the bend that we had to do here, I probably would have been better off beading it on the uh, bead bag a little bit more. Now I need a full size bead bag. I've only got a compact bead bag that's full of steel shot rather than the larger ones that you fill with sand. But yeah, what I could have done is beaten a lot more shape into this with some mallet and then smoothed it out. And that's the beauty of the planishing hammer. What I found was that as I was working this, if I did mess up, make a mistake, bend it too much or anything like that, uh, I could bend it back even quite roughly and then I could just basically use the planishing hammer as a magic eraser to just take out all the evidence of what I'd just done and get it back to smooth. I probably do need a few more anvils because in some areas where I was trying to just get it back to flat, the anvils that I've got, uh, none of them are flat so they all want to put a slight curve into it. So it was hard to, once I'd got it exactly where I wanted to, just to flatten it back out without increasing the radius. So for those things, I just put it on the end of my vise and I just beat it into submission with a standard panel hammer. So yeah, it's pretty close. And if we have a look at it on the car, you can see the gaps are not great, but they're pretty good. The main thing I was worried about was getting a smooth line here because this can be just tweaked down a little bit and held when I go to MIG it in place. But if this was bumpy or not the right shape or the right radius, or wasn't a straight line or whatever, that would have been really hard to fix. So I did have to cut the panel in a couple of spots here because there's an area here of the drip rail that actually pops out and moves backwards. So I didn't realize that when I was first cutting this out. So to try and make a single piece go over there was never gonna work. So yeah, couple of clips, I'll zip them up with the MIG when I weld some metal in place. But I reckon I've got this panel to the point now where I can just put it to the side, take out the top metal, and then have a look at what's underneath and start with repairing that first. Then when I come back to put this in place, I might need to do some more tweaking there, but it'll be much easier if I can actually drop it in past the metal and check all the lines and make sure they're all sitting properly. So yeah, really happy with it so far. I'm just gonna mark out the boundaries with a paint pen and then we'll break out the grinders. This is just rough so I don't cut out too much metal. So I'm actually gonna try and take it out across what I think is the brazing line. All right, so the doctor is in. Um, I've cut out two layers there. Uh, actually, there's multiple pieces on top of each other. So this piece goes up and through to there. And then it was overlapped by a brace from here to here. Uh, and obviously this piece dropped down and was overlapped by the whole roof skin and brazed across there. So anyway, I feel pretty comfortable with a couple of things. Firstly, We've exposed enough here to be pretty sure that we can get to all the rust and treat it all really well and replace what we need to replace. I'm going to get the air duster in here and blow everything out as much as possible. We're going to spray rust converter down all of these panels until basically it drips through them all. Uh, grind as much of this scaly stuff back as we can. And then we'll try to get that bad boy in place. And to be honest, I'm really good at the moment. Once I can uh, trim that into place, that line matches up really nice. This one's not looking too bad either. But yeah, from here, it's just about cutting out some jigsaw puzzle pieces. I'm not gonna bother too much around getting these bends and everything right, as long as there is strength of a piece of metal from there to there and from here to here. And then same within this spot here, I don't really care if it follows the previous profile. Uh, I'll need to get it close on this end but the rest of it doesn't matter as long as it doesn't sit proud and interfere with what the top panel should be. So I'm gonna grind the surface of these bits. I'm gonna rust converter the whole area. Then we'll get some weld through primer on it and start welding in some patch panels.
All right, so that's all been cleaned out now. A lot of rust converter, I also deburred these edges here. So we're gonna weld this in now and then we'll clean up the welds and then uh, protect this surface here. And then we'll start trimming up the outer skin. And once that's in a position to be welded, finally welded in, we'll protect the back of that as well. Uh, the same way that we're gonna protect this metal under here. So yeah, time to fire up the welder. All right, so this is roughly in place at the moment and you can see uh, the line between the roof and the patch panel piece is almost perfect. I'm absolutely amazed that that has come out like that on the first try. I thought I was gonna have to tweak it a lot more. This corner around here you can see is low. It's probably a millimeter too low on that corner. But other than that, it's all fitting pretty much perfectly. So. What I'm gonna do is just uh, tweak this slightly. Uh, I'll probably just do it on the vise to make sure it stays flat. And then I'm gonna tack in all the corners uh, to try and make sure it's all aligned properly. And then we'll get the straight edge onto it. Now, before I do that, I'm just gonna say, the straight edge is not obviously gonna sit flat on it, but the straight edge is gonna help me identify whether I've got a reasonable curve all the way through. It's also part of the reason I cut this on an angle. So I could have cut this as a square, but what I would have ended up then with is a weld line along here and any movement or change in the shape would have been um, a lot more difficult to deal with because if I weld along here, I'm gonna bring the panel in line all the way through the curve at this point. So at least this edge here will match the original. And then if I've got the shape right, so will this. Well, we're on the home stretch now, people. I'm really excited. Let's tack this in and see where we're at. So we're all tacked in, that went pretty well. Uh, only some minor tweaking as I went. And uh, now I'm just gonna check it with a straight edge and if it's all good, we will spot weld it in. Obviously we've gotta be really careful to keep the heat down through this. So what I'll be doing is tacking sort of one inch apart all the way around, cooling it off with some uh, compressed air and then coming back around again and again and again and again and again until it's all full up. And hopefully we don't have too much warpage in the roof here because uh, that would suck. So yeah, I'm gonna be really, really careful because uh, it's looking absolutely amazing at the moment and I don't want to cock it up in the home stretch.
Okay, so that is looking really good. I am absolutely stoked with the way it came out. Uh, if you like it, the only thing I can say is make sure you remember to like the episode as well and subscribe and hit that notification bell. But again, yeah, now it's time to talk about some final thoughts and then we'll have a close up look at the finished product. So how did it all go? Well, for me, I can say the planishing hammer is definitely gonna be a good investment. There's lots of curves on this car and there's a lot of areas where I'm gonna have to butt weld a couple of pieces of metal and then planishing over the top of them will help reduce the amount of welding shrinkage and straighten them all out nice and proper. Now it wasn't absolutely simple to do, there was a lot of going back and forward between the car and the punishing hammer and the vice and the beater bag and all those sorts of things, but that is the beauty of working with metal. I've done a fair amount of work with wood and uh, wood's fairly intolerant when you mess up, you're usually reaching for the next sheet to uh, recreate without the failure, but with metal it's so malleable that you can just move things around and shape them till your heart's content basically, and then you can use the planishing hammer and take out all evidence of the work that you've done. You do have to be careful about work hardening your material, but I don't think we're in any risk of doing that on what we've just finished up. So the patch itself, now the patch I would say is a good 90% patch. There is a small area towards the end where the panel did tip down too far and there's a low spot where it joins the other panel. But not more than a centimeter away from it, there's a high spot. So it's not a case of me welding it at the wrong height, it's a case of having the wrong curve at the back of the panel. And if I had any tips to make that easier, I would say start with your most complicated piece first. I went ahead and threw a curve in it and then I got really excited when I put it on the car and it was really close to that front edge. So I kept working that until I got it right and then I moved on to the more complicated back half. Now I should have swapped those two around, it would have been much easier doing the back more complicated area first and once that was sweet, then shifting down towards the front of the panel where it would have been much easier to finalize the shape without compromising the rear section. But I think the finished product speaks for itself. Uh, there's gonna be very minimal filler in there and I'm pretty sure the rust repair is one that's gonna last for a long time too. Now, those of you that are keen-eyed montage viewers, you would have noticed that at the bottom lip of the inside panel, I didn't weld fully across the seam. And that's in an attempt to try and combat what I think is a design flaw in these. So the outside skin of the roof and the inside skin of the sail area overlap each other. And where they are welded and brazed together, that's where water condenses and it rusts through. So what I've done is I've left that open so that if water does get in there just through condensation on the roof or anything like that and then pulls down in that area, it should be able to flow out and then work its way down to the bottom of the car and out through that dog leg. And we made sure that we had really good drainage through that dog leg. So hopefully that's gonna address that in perpetuity. So yeah, that's where I'm gonna leave it. So far, we've got a lot of work done to that one side of the car and we've gone into a lot of detail about the types of things you're gonna run into and how to repair them. And if you haven't watched that three-part episode on fixing that dog leg, you've gotta do it. It's an absolute banger. I'll link to it up above. But I'm gonna take a big leap now and call my shot because next week, what I'm gonna try and do is the entire other side of the car. Now that B side I left because it didn't seem to be as bad as the other side and I wanted to show you guys the bad stuff first. So yeah, stick around for that one. Hopefully you won't have to watch me fail miserably. Uh, in the meantime, there's plenty more content on Violet Crumbles, which I'm gonna link to here. And there's also some episodes about the A90 here. Other than that, I just wanna say thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on The Build Room. Bye for now.